at this point in the class, I actually wanted to talk about joining or recording into a actual MIDI region. So I'm going to mute this actual drum performance and go back up to my Yamaha grand piano scale, C major scale that I played. Now, in older versions of Logic, like even uh, Logic 9 and things of that nature, if you recorded MIDI on top of another MIDI region, what would happen is Logic would create MIDI, another region that lived as a layer, kind of, can you see that? Kind of like on top of the other MIDI region. And the more you record it over, it would just stack layers of MIDI regions on top. Now those MIDI regions were transparent um, as far as audio wise. You could actually hear all of the different layers play through. So it sounded wonderful in that one area. But when you moved, you went to move it, it would only move the top layer. It was like peeling the skin off, an, off, an, off of an onion and moving it to a different location. So maybe if you were programming drums, you did the, dr the kick first, then the snare in a second recording, and then you did the hi-hat in a third recording. But then if you went to move that or copy it, you would just be moving the hi-hat, which was on the top. So the hi-hat would move and nothing else would come with it. In the latest version of Logic, they changed that default behavior to if you record over top of a region, it automatically merges. And you can see here under record in the overlapping MIDI recording settings that whether you're in cycle or not, the default behavior is for it to merge. You just experienced it in cycle mode as I recorded into that. It merged all of those MIDI notes into that one region. So I'm going to uh, play some basic uh, chords over top of this scale to just actually put something in here. Let's see. We're going to go back to the beginning. Oh, that's too low. I'm going to change my octave again. Not going up to what I want. There we go. All right, so I'm going to hit record and I have the grand piano track selected. Just going to record some simple chords over top of that. Now, what you see here is that that region now has these actual chords inside of it. And if I click in the background of my piano roll editor and hit Z, you can see all of the chords that I played inside and the actual scale that was there originally. So in this one region now, everything was merged into that region. If I move it, everything goes with it, right? That was not always the default behavior of Logic, but it is now, and it makes a lot of sense. I'm very happy with that. That was one of the, when I initially got into Logic in like Logic 7 or 8, it was one of the things that frustrated me for a long time because I didn't know what was going on. I couldn't understand why it wasn't doing that. But there was a setting to fix it, and now it's kind of the default behavior. Now, there is um, other things you can do with this. So I showed you how it performed if we're in kind of a cycle when we did the drum. It just merges those parts inside of that actual recording. But you can actually do something else. So I'm going to get rid of these two regions. And um, actually, I want my piano track back. I didn't mean to get rid of that. So I have my piano track here. And I'm going to change this down to uh, maybe three bars. Let's see here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a take, MIDI takes. Basically, I can set my cycle to when it actually records in a loop that every time it creates, goes over in that loop, it will create a new take meaning I will have options as long as I play something different on each loop of this cycle. So if it's set to um, two bars or whatever, once it loops to the end, gets back around to the beginning, I will actually have a new option for to actually, as long as I record a different scale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the cycle uh, play. And then I'm going, as it's playing, I'm going to play like the C major scale, and then I'm going to switch to D, and then I'm going to switch to E upon each uh, return. And let's see here. And we'll have to first change our record settings. So I'm going to go under record, go under overlapping MIDI, and under overlapping MIDI, 
I'm going to uh, under cycle is where I want to make the change at. Under cycle, as it cycles, instead of merging, which is a default behavior, I want to change that to create a take folder. So create a take folder. And if you look on that list, you'll see that you got quite a few options. Create a take folder, merge, merge with the current recording only, create new tracks, create tracks and mute and replace. So I wanted to create a take folder. And we'll have a quick discussion about what a take folder is. So the first time I'm going to do three cycles of it. First time I'm going to do C major. Then I'm going to do um, D major. Then I'm going to do E major. Maybe if I set the cycle to four bars like it needs to be, I could do this correctly. Let me try that again. Just like that, I've recorded three different scales. And if you look at the region here, let me blow this way up so you can see it. Region looks a little bit different. That's because the region is actually now what's called a take folder. And you can tell a take folder because it has this little disclosure triangle right here in the left hand corner. To open the take folder, you can either double click the take folder or you can click disclosure triangle. Let me close out my piano roll editor. So I'm going to double click it. And now what you're seeing is the contents of the take folder. The take folder has three separate takes in it from the three different scales that I played. The last scale that I played is the E scale. So if I play this scale is selected or this take is selected in the actual take folder. And you can see up here in the name, it says Yamaha Grand Piano take three. And if I play it, you'll hear the E scale. like I missed some notes in there but if I go to the uh, second take this would be the D scale looks like my time was a little bit off and if I go here you'll get the C scale the original one Now, you can actually uh, name these takes individually. Let's say, for instance, I want to name them. So I can uh, go here to the right of that disclosure triangle, and you have a menu here. And in that menu, you can do a lot of things. Rename the takes, which we'll do. You can delete takes. You can flatten. You can unpack them to their own track um, and things of that nature. So I'm going to say uh, rename. And with this take selected, I'm just going to call it C major. And then I can go here. Rename, call it uh, D major. And then here finally would be E major. So now it makes more sense. So whichever one I select, you'll see the take folder take on the name of that. And if I fold it up, it will just play that part. Now when we get into audio recording, I'll show you a lot more things that you can do with take folders and audio and recording takes, which is where I use it more often. But if I say I, I would just want to keep the C major scale, I could very simply flatten this take folder by going to that menu and say flatten, and it'll basically just delete the other takes, get rid of the take folder, and just leave me with the region with the C major scale in it. And then again, uh, if I double click it and go into Piano Roll Editor, I still have the ability to do any fixes or anything else that I need to take care of in this situation. Okay, cool. So that was how you could join uh, MIDI regions in different ways. We talked about merging. We talked about recording in um, cycle mode with merge. And then I showed you how uh, it would respond if you change that behavior to recording uh, takes. I'm actually going to go back to record and put that back to its default behavior under cycle, which would be merge. Cool. All right, let's get rid of that. And I'm going to go back to my drum track here. And again, once I go there, I need to 
change my keyboard to send MIDI to it, to the right, what you call it? Oops. Looks like my keyboard is not sending MIDI into my computer. You see that? As I'm playing the keyboard, I'm not getting anything up here. Let me make sure this hasn't caused any problems. Oh, that is sending MIDI. I'm going to unplug my MIDI keyboard and plug it back in. Hopefully I don't lose it off the screen here. Sorry about this. Hold on one second. There we go. I don't know what that was about, but unplugging and plugging things usually fixes it. Put this key this back up here. Okay. 